Namaste friends. India is at an important crossroads. There are a lot of great opportunities standing in front of India and also a few big challenges that are either holding back India or standing in its way as it as it wants to move forward. So let us assess them. As usual, I will share my assessments first and then the technical analysis, the astrological analysis after that so that people not interested in it can skip it. There is a major geopolitical transformation in progress in the world right now. And this is something I predicted for this time frame in the, in the, in the 2000 time frame. Uh, there is a superpower struggle going on between the top two superpowers of the world, US and China. And both of them are vying for the top position and to dominate the world. And there is a cold war between them that may soon develop into a war that is not so cold. And when superpowers struggle, they want partners, strategic partners. And fortunately for India, this is a moment of destiny for India. India is strategically placed in many ways and a natural partner for US. One of the things going for India is India is a democracy like US and it has been stable for the there has been stable government for the last eight years and it, it is likely to continue for some more years so india is a very attractive partner to us and us is also forming some new alliances there is an increased focus on indo-pacific because the indo-pacific region is very important for trade oil trade and a lot of strategic reasons military reasons as well as commercial reasons and China has been trying to dominate that region. So US needs strategic partners there. And India is a very important partner in the Indo-Pacific region. And for those who may not be aware, there is an alliance that is that has that is growing its clout in the last few years. It's called Quad. It is comprised of US, India, Australia, and Japan, the four countries in the Indo-Pacific region. So I expect that this alliance will become more and more important in coming years, both in terms of economy, trade, and also in terms of military. And you can see that there is growing trade and military ties between India and US. Uh, in the, during the time of Barack Obama, he started looking towards India and the ties, military ties and tra trading ties between India and US became stronger. And during Modi, Narendra Modi and Trump time also it continued and it continues to increase. And also Quad is contributing to that now. And I expect that this will become closer. The ties between India and US will become closer in future. And as an economy, India is on the rise. It is either the fifth or sixth largest economy, depending on how you count. And it is a big market for the Western countries, US and Europe, as well as China. And in the past, India was very naive but today's India has capable leadership, which is which cannot be bought off like in the past. And they are learning to leverage the economic power India has to fulfill India's self-interest. And you will start seeing it more and more as they mature, as they become mature leaders, you will see this more. India leveraging its economic power, just like China used to do in the 90s and 2000s. And India's GDP growth has been resilient over the years, over the last decade or so, even amid major challenges like the pandemic. Even during the pandemic, India's GDP growth was relative to other countries uh, better. And uh, even now, India has one of the highest growth rates in the world compared to the other countries. So I, I know that some people are hurt by the falling economy. But relative to other countries, India is still doing a lot better. So there are a lot of things going for India. Economy is on the rise and, and there are strategic alliances developing and countries are valuing India's opinion. So all this is good, but there are also some things that are holding India back. Ever since India was partitioned in 1947 into India and Pakistan based on religions, 
uh, with under the notion that Muslims need a separate nation, they can't be a part of secular. They can't be happy in secular India. Once a separate Muslim nation was formed under that notion, religious tensions have been an Achilles' heel for secular India, and there have been some tensions in the last few weeks. Uh, for those who don't know, you can search for Nupur Sharma uh, or Udaipur beheading, and you can find you can find the news. Basically. Uh, spokesperson of the BJP party, she was in a TV debate, and somebody uh, made some insulting comments about Lord Shiva, and uh, while countering it, she said, "Do you want me to talk about this?" And he, she, she, she quoted some what she, what she claims are objective facts from the scripture of the other person from the hadiths, and uh, about the prophet of that religion, and that resulted in big hue and cry. And she was suspended from the party and suspended as the spokesperson. And there are a lot of blasphemy cases against her. And fatwas issued for her for killing her. And two people who supported her in social media, just common common people, common men, uh, laymen, they were they were killed by jihadis in India. So there is lot of tension going on in India. And I want to I want to point out one thing here. There is much history and subtext here to unpack. Don't judge these incidents just based on the exact words somebody said or exact tone somebody used, etc. There is a lot of history and subtext that is going behind what people are saying and how they are saying, saying it, and also how they are reacting to it. The visceral reaction that you see from some people, unfortunately, has to do with a lot of history. There is a millennium of history here. Hindus were oppressed in India in their homeland for a millennium, first by the invading Muslim rulers, and later by the British rulers and the Christian missionaries. Hindus were forced forcibly converted to other religions. Hindus were killed. Their temples were destroyed and converted to uh, monuments of other religions. And the Hindu women were raped, and Hindu women were forced to marry other religions and convert. And Hindu men were also forced to convert. So this happened for a long time, and there is a there is a deep wound in the psyche of Hindus as a result of it. And unfortunately, even after independence, even though India is supposed to be secular, appeasement of non-Hindus for vote bank politics continued. Unfortunately, uh, until now, actually, even now it continues. So this has made Hindus very unhappy. And also, India has some strong blasphemy laws, but they are used against Hindus. Then they are never really used for Hindus. For example, when somebody like M. F. Hussain uh, makes really offensive paintings of Hindu gods and goddesses, that's basically tolerated by the by by the those in power as well as by media. And if, for example, if Salman Rushdie uh, gets in a controversy about satanic verses, the media supports him in the name of freedom of speech, but When a Hindu woman uh, quoted something from an Islamic scripture, uh, and uh, Muslims found it offensive, there are blasphemy cases against her, and there are calls to kill her, uh, behead her. So this kind of double standards in applying blasphemy is basically something that made Indians very unhappy. There's a lot of simmering sentiments on the media hypocrisy. Like I said, those who support. Supported Salman Rushdie or those who supported M. F. Hussain, they are not really supportive of Nupur Sharma. They 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 are very critical of Nupur Sharma. So the notion is, Hindus have to be extremely careful. They cannot say something that is even remotely perceived as a criticism of other religions or prophets of other religions. Whereas Other religions can basically say whatever they want to say about Hinduism and Hindu gods. They can ridicule Hindu gods, ridicule Hinduism and customs of Hinduism, like like some Muslim leaders of India routinely do, and there are no consequences. So that basically makes people unhappy, and it touches a raw nerve because, like I said, Hindus were oppressed for a millennium. And during that time, because they were ruling, the other religions were ruling over Hindus. The kings were of that religion. 
they could destroy temples they could ridicule hindu gods and hinduism and hindu practices and they could force people to convert and that was okay but hindus had to keep their mouth shut and that continuing even in a secular india basically takes people back to that time so that is what really makes lot of hindus unhappy so there is a lot of history here and i am afraid based on based on the current astrological combinations etc i am afraid this is not like the other religious tensions we have seen in the past i am afraid this is a watershed moment that will play out the consequences of this will play out for years coming years at the same time i really hope that sane people on both sides keep their calm and let this from boiling over uh, i hope that there are lot of see one thing you have to remember even though there are some fringe elements on both sides there are a lot of sane elements on both sides there are a lot of muslims lot of christians lot of hindus who are peace loving who really value secularism so i hope that people belonging to various religions will will try to contain the fringe elements within their own their own religions one thing i am afraid of is there may be an international conspiracy behind it if you remember in my new year video i mentioned that there may be some social unrest there may be some foreign efforts to create social unrest in the country with some partial success during the year the thing is if you look at it uh, from a from a large uh, from a from a long term perspective from a larger perspective india has been under the rule of Uh, the right wing party bjp party bjp coalition for the last 8 years and narendra modi he is a very independent person he is not unlike the past leaders of india on whom west had some control either western institutions or lobbies or propaganda elements were able to have some exercise some control over them but for the first time india has a leader has leadership that is completely independent and that cannot be controlled by foreign elements foreign lobbies so it is in the interest of those people to get rid of them and unfortunately for them india has a very weak opposition right now the main congress party is sticking to rahul gandhi who i said based on his horoscope in the past will never become the prime minister so he has demonstrated that he is not really leadership material but his mother really wants him to remain the leader so he remains the leader of the congress party and the other the third parties the the third front doesn't really have any one leader everybody wants to become the leader of the third front so the opposition is really scattered there's no strong opposition so there is it is very likely both astrologically but also common sense wise that narendra modi ji's government will come back in 2023 24 general election so the only way this can be stopped is if godra like riots can be created like in 2002 if some riots can be created and some instability can be uh, created in india that is the best chance of opposition saying that oh these are these are communal we want we want progress not communal tension so i am afraid that there is there is an international conspiracy and indian government and sane hindus as well as sane muslims and sane christians have to really take care so that it doesn't go out of control and india will go backwards the focus should be on progress not on settling these long term tensions because i mentioned these not because you have to do something about it and you have to you have to kill people to basically Uh, do justice for what happened in the past that's not the reason this is to understand where people are coming from understand what is the psyche of people why people are reacting viscerally to what is happening but the thing is this is not really there's no solution there's no quick solution to this the real focus should be on progress now quick uh, expectations on uh, sri nupur sharma mrs mrs nupur sharma she she is the she is the spokesperson of the bjp party who was dismissed after this controversy i can't reveal her chart in the second section i won't go through her chart uh, i have to, i was i was requested to keep it confidential but i believe that the next 15 months are terrible for her uh, she 
this whole thing started when rahu after rahu came to aries and unfortunately aries is her eighth house with sun and rahu and rahu is approaching the natal rahu very closely so this is this is really a problematic period for her and there is a danger of physical harm it is real it is a very real danger i hope that indian government protects her as he, as she travels from one city to another city fighting these countless blasphemy cases i hope that they can protect her the next month or two is very critical particularly the end of july and early august because uh, mars and rahu will conjoin exactly uh, i think on august 1st exactly on the longitude of her natal rahu so that is a really problematic transit so this is a very critical period for her and the next spring also looks very bad when rahu will touch her natal sun in the eighth house so that is a problematic period again i think this will be a long ordeal for her a year between a year or two two years or maybe a year and half a very long ordeal for her she really she needs your blessing your prayers and blessing so everybody who wants peace in the country please pray for her well being now while while i mentioned that there are increasing strategic ties between us and india don't be naive when when uh, you have to realize that the propaganda against india in the west will continue and also some organizations within india that are driven by the western agenda that basically are either funded or ideologically aligned with those western organizations they will continue to do propaganda against india and especially against the current indian administration which is perceived to be pro hindu india will will have to learn to compartmentalize this thing india cannot say uh, these uh, oh this us governmental organization is giving a bad report against us so let's cut off everything with us you can't do that you have to the way the modern world works is there are so many compartments within a democracy and everybody has their own agenda and their own power their own cloud and based on it they will pursue their agenda and you just have to deal with everybody to the best of your ability and you have to learn to use your own money and power and the cloud that you can get out of it and india will will learn to compartmentalize and deal with various of these propaganda arms very effectively i just want to give a couple of examples there was a recent time headline which ta- which says hindu lives matter emerges as dangerous slogan after horrific li- killing in india so after the udaipur beheading after a an amravati killing after two two hindus were killed for just supporting in social media nupur sharma after they were killed there was a hindu lives matter movement and 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 the, and the rally and time basically takes offensive the thing is there are two things you have to realize here one is there are some agendas against india every nation and organizations within the nation work towards their own self interest so there have there have been uh, very long standing agendas against india so those agendas will continue to do their job you have to fight them but one thing we have to realize is there are lot of uh, left leaning people in the west who may be willing to appreciate india's cause but they don't because india doesn't sell its cause well enough uh, let, let me put it this way the perception in the west is that the current hindu awakening in india is akin to the west uh, the white supremacy movement of us so uh, narendra modi ji is like trump the hindutva movement is like the uh, white supremacy movement of us that's the current that's the notion that many people have and some people may know that this is wrong but still push it but unfortunately india does not counter this narrative that much if you ask me hindus even the, the only common thing between hindus and whites of america is that they are a majority but the thing is the white supremacy movement and the push back to the black lives matter within us is a majority driven movement to keep the hold of the majority whereas in india even though hindus are a majority hindus have been oppressed for a millennium so in a way hindus are not really like whites they are more like 
the blacks of america and also the native americans of america who were persecuted and killed and dominated for hundreds of years so in that way hindu lives matter is actually similar to black lives matter but the thing is instead of focusing on the fact that yeah hindus are a majority but they were oppressed and uh, there is a pismment of the non hindus and hindus are suffering because of it instead of pushing that narrative instead of having lobbies that push that narrative india basically either remains silent or just uh, uh sits offended which is not really which is not really the way things work in the global lobbying so india has to advocate for its own causes better let me give another example USCIRF which is United States Council of International Religious Freedom so they have a, this annual report so the report came out a couple of days back few days back and it talked about growing intolerance and persecution of minorities in india and ironically this happened just after jihadis killed two hindus for supporting a hindu woman against whom there are calls of killing so this is really ironic The, the thing is, the, the, there are a lot of agendas here. There are lobby groups that are against the current Indian administration, and India really has to battle this narrative. See, in in the world, there is a battle of narratives, and India has to realize how to fight this battle of narratives. India, if you ignore it, that's not a good strategy when the, it is actually winning. When the narrative is winning, ignoring is not the right strategy. You have to counter these narratives and create counter narratives. and put enough money and energy behind those narratives and there are narratives that you can you can sell and one thing i want to point out is in the in india right wing will dominate for the next decade or so on the other hand in us right wing and left wing will basically keep exchanging power in foreseeable future so india cannot put all their eggs in one basket and as a matter of fact india's right wing has some things common with america's left wing as a matter of fact modi government has done more progressive agenda items than obama or biden have been able to so like left and right are just labels so instead of completely uh, detaching from the left wing of us you, india should build its case such that even the left wing can sympathize with it and of course there will always be some elements that are that are very biased and that have a strong agenda and also that have financial interests that do not um, go by whom you cannot influence but there are there are a lot of people that they co-opt lot of people both on the left and right wings that that are co-opted into these narratives that are created by popular narrative creators so india has to do a better job of not putting all their eggs in one basket creating narratives that basically can sway people on both left and right in the western world there are a few crises going on in in india's neighborhood pakistan the political chaos is likely to continue and i expect that 2023 24 will be even worse a year from now pakistan may enter an, an even more unstable period so there will be some cross border challenges as a result of it when things become too hot in pakistan they try to send some heat india's way through the border so india has to be careful with isi and some cross border uh, terrorist activity and also the religious tension that we talked about they may have some pakistan connection also so india has to be very careful with that and as far as sri lanka is concerned i believe that they are close to rock bottom now things are as i said in my uh, new year video lunar new year video things are likely to improve from july with some foreign help so i i am very hopeful that we are close to bottom and sri lanka will start improving so hopefully there won't be any crisis from sri lanka and refugees uh, affecting india south india one thing even though not directly related to what i am talking about here i want to answer is lot of people ask me this is a common question posted in comments on my videos will sanatan dharma survive i realize that there are significant challenges to sanatan dharma there is persecution of hindus in some quarters and then if hindus basically try to protest it is seen as uh, persecution of minorities so uh, that is how indian and global media portray it. so i know that hindus are frustrated i know there are some significant challenges to sanatan dharma in india but let me put it this way 
Sanatan Dharma survived much bigger challenges for a millennium when Muslim rulers were killing and killing Hindus without any, without any uh, discretion, uh, without any discrimination. So there were really much, much more terrible times and Sanatan Dharma survived it. So it will survive, it will survive this phase and it will actually come out stronger. Of course we have to do our job towards that but don't worry about Sanatana Dharma, it will go through a lot of tensions and struggles in the next few years but it will come out really stronger by mid 2030s. And what should be India's focus for the next few years? Minimize religious tensions. I understand that there, is, there are a lot of emotions, pent up emotions which are probably justified but there is no way to fix things, there is no realistic way to fix things. So uh, minimize religious tensions, don't basically fall prey, don't walk into the trap of creating religious riots and then uh, undo all the good of the last eight years and invest in green technology. Green technology is very important and China is doing a very smart thing by investing in it. So invest in green technology, invest in infrastructure, invest in education and healthcare. And other thing is, as I said in previous videos, we are almost guaranteed to be in a major war in 2030, 2030-2031 time frame. The whole world, uh, most of the major powers of the world. So India should invest big in defense R&D, especially and including cyber, cyber technology. Cyber defense may become very important. And, and if there are any cutting edge technologies that can give you an edge in a major war in the time period, invest in those technologies. And also develop friendship with US and NATO with keen awareness of self-interest. Don't compromise your self-interest, but keep building relationship with US because I, I, I think that in 2030 time period, India will have to fight on the side of US and NATO against China, Russia, Iran and North Korea alliance. At the same time, because India has a lot of dependence and lot of historic relationship with Russia, maintain friendship with Russia, don't cut off with them, but slowly increase the cooperation with US, especially militarily and become a counter force to China in the region and focus on economic growth, focus on basically making things in India as well as trade agreement with various countries, not just the big countries but also various small countries, especially in the Indo-Pacific region because it's going to be an important region, Africa, Australia, th that whole region, Southeast Asia, that region have a lot of trade agreements. And in the long term, I want to, I'm very confident that by 2040, based on the 20 year chart of India from 2020 till 2040, I am confident that India is entering a phase of its destiny, an important phase when India will take off. There will be excellent technological accomplishments for India in this 20 year period and there will be excellent and confident foreign relations for India. India will be one of the global opinion leaders in this period and Indian economy will continue to be strong and it will be one of the top nations in the world economically. But one thing I want to point out is this transition will not be smooth. There will be a lot of tensions, lot of pain, lot of suffering, but it will be worth it in the end. At, at the end, after all this suffering, India will be a, in a better place than it is right now. So this is basically what I wanted to share today. Now let me give some some of the astrological reasoning behind some of these things. Now look, let us look at some astrological analysis. So this is the chart, lunar new year chart of India, the first new moon of Dakshinayana uh, on June 29. So let us look at this chart. So there are some weaknesses in this chart. The Lagna Lord is in the 12th house, so there can be some uh, problem for hidden enemies, 6th house is enemies and 12th house is hidden enemies. So there can be some tensions from the hidden enemies, he is also with the Marka son. But the thing is the 11th Lord Venus is in own house, so there will be financial gains will be there, financially things will be good. Let us make the Bhav Chakra based on Rasi. And Jupiter the 9th Lord is in 9th house, so Dharma is strong. 
uh, the house of principles, but he has Papakattari from Saturn, Mars, Rahu. So some tensions relating to religious matters is possible. We will see another chart to confirm that. And the tenth and the tenth house of government contains Rahu, eighth lord. So that shows some disruption to the governing process from foreign influence. So foreign meddling and try, trying to weaken the government is possible because of eighth lord Rahu in the tenth house. If we look at the Navamsa chart, we see that the Lagna Lord Saturn is exalted in the 10th house and his dispositor and Yokarka Venus is in the 5th house of Porapunya. So this is a great blessing. This is a really uh, good combination. So this is a very good year for improving foreign relations. But at the same time, the 6th sixth, sixth house contains Ketu, Badaka Lord Ketu and the 6th house of enmities and 6th lord mercury is in the 8th house so there can be some en trouble from some enemies but overall foreign relations will really improve during the year and the 4th house it shows direction in foreign relations so 4th house contains mars so india will take very india will uh, will continue to be very aggressive in relations with other countries and other organizations, international organizations, etc. India will be very assertive in, during this year. And if we want to see the Hora chart, and again make the Bhav Chakra for the Hora chart. You see that the ninth Lord Mercury is in the ninth, is in one sign. And also lag and longitude wise, Lagna Lord Venus is with him. So there is a Raj Yoga between Lagna Lord and Ninth Lord in the ninth house. That is a terrific combination. There is Rahu Ketu influence on the eighth house. So there will be some ups and downs and struggles, but there are enough blessings. And the eleventh house of gains contains eleventh Lord Sun. So financial gains will be good. And the seventh house of relations with other countries and business, it contains Mars the planet or the aggressive planet. So India will be will aggressively pursue new agreements and relationships with other nations during the year. So this is really a good year for India. Let us look at the Trimsyamsa which shows uh, tensions and unrest in the country during the year. Lagna Lord Venus is afflicted by enemy Jupiter who is also the 8th and 11th Lord. So that is one weakness. The other thing is Rahu Ketu are also on the taxes. So Lagna Lord with the 8th Lord Rahu Ketu on the 8th house axis is really problematic. And Badaka Lord Saturn, also the ninth Lord of religion, he happens to be with Mars in the evil sign of Scorpio. And this is the 7th house. So this can show some foreign influence creating some disturbance in the country. And if you correlate this with Navamsa, in the Navamsa chart, you see that Rahu Ketu are on the 6th and 12th axis. So some of the enemies may be involved with that. That is one thing that you can you can you can take away from this. And also Jupiter is the third lord in Navamsa. Third is sibling, right? Brother, younger brother. So that is basically in uh, it can also show neighbors. So Jupiter is also involved. So uh, in the Thimsamsa chart, so the Andresh may be with some neighboring countries and some foreign influence, etc. And some standard enemies, Ketu and Ketu, who is in the sixth house in Navamsa. So they can be the reason for those, uh, that unrest in the society. Let us look at Colombo, Sri Lanka. Very Sri Lanka. Come on, Sri Lanka. First, let us look at the previous year which was really terrible. They hit a rock bottom in that year. So let's make the previous chart before June 4. So that will be 2021. So mid 2021, a new year started. Look at this chart. The Lagna Lord is in an inimical sign in the eighth house, which is not good. Fourth house of Sukhasthana, basically being peaceful, comfortable, happy, knowing what you're doing and feeling a sense of direction. That house has Seni Rahu Ketu and Seni Rahu happened to own the 12th house of losses. So this is basically no peace in this year. Lot of unrest in the society. And second Lord Mars and third Lord Venus are together in the third house. That is a Marka combination. 
and also by the way seventh lord mercury is also with them so second third and seventh lords on the third house so that's that's problematic so there are there is a lot of unrest in the society and let us look at the uh, government governing so the the tenth lord son is tenth lord and ninth lord are uh, together aspecting the tenth house that is why i thought that government will survive this this uh, period because tenth house is reasonably strong but on the negative side you see that the marka house is very strong so seventh house is the marka house uh, venus is there so marka house is very strong and rahu is also there so there is a strong marka influence and the ninth house of protection contains eighth lord mercury and also is badaka house so eighth lord in the badaka house is problematic and also third lord in the second house is again problematic so that that is that may be why in spite of the strength of the 10th house the one 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 member of the government did not survive i think prime minister or president resigned i forgot who uh, if you look at the financial situation this is ter- really terrible you will see that the 10th house contains the 8th lord which is not which is a duryoga uh, and the, basically financial management by the government is terrible and there is a gurujandala yoga on the second ax- house axis second house contains jupiter but rahu aspects him so there is a gurujandala yoga rahu ketu in the 8th house and 12th is very strong lagna lord is in the 12th house of losses in a nirmikal sign and venus uh, is also there uh, 12th lord so 12th is very strong so 12th and 8th being very strong means big financial losses in the year so if we change it to july 4 and say previous year now we'll get a chart in the middle of 2022 so in this chart you see that ninth lord mercury is in the eighth house longitude wise with rahu ketu still not good but at least he is in one sign ninth lord is in one sign so is somewhat better and more importantly the yeah so so more importantly there is a yoga between saturn and mercury the ninth lord and fifth lord so there is a rajyoga between mercury and saturn so that is uh, if you look at the longitudes that is basically within 5 degrees mercury is in d2 at 8 degrees saturn is at 3 and 1/2 degrees so within 5 degrees there is a rajyoga between uh, mercury and saturn so that is uh, por- saturn owns porakunja he is yokarka mercury is protection so that is a blessing and the lagna lord is in the ninth house of protection not in the 12th house of loss like in the other chart so there are some uh, some reasonable blessings here so i am hopeful that it's not that things will be rosy in the coming year but coming last year was really terrible and from july onwards things can be better for sri lanka and if we look at the d10 chart of uh, government yeah lagna is at 10 degree so no need to look at the bhava it will be more or less same okay so eighth house is pretty strong but it's a vipreet raj yoga 12th lord and 8th lord in the eighth house is vipreet raj yoga it shows basically uh, almost going down and then coming back up and the ninth lord jupiter and 10th lord mars are together in the 10th house so it shows rulers being very principled and also very aggressive and giving good leadership and lagna lord moon is also in samsaptaka with them so there is a nice raj yoga so i think government will strengthen itself during the coming year and they will provide good governance and economy will be will start to revive during this year things will still be bad but not not nearly as bad as they were in the past and now some of the long term things long term positive things that i say about india for that let us look at the 20 year chart Well, there is a 300 year chart it was using that chart that i predicted that from june june 2019 till june 2036 there will be lot of suffering in the world wars etc basically the pandemic happened then ukraine war happened then and most of may come so i will probably cover that in a separate video some other time i'll stick to the 20 year chart here so for india let us look at the saturn jupiter conjunction previous saturn jupiter conjunction and this conjunction is very important because 
Jupiter is the is the expansive force and Saturn is the contracting force. Jupiter is like breathing in, Saturn is like breathing out. Jupiter is like fullness and Saturn is like uh, rictata or emptiness. So the the contrast, they are almost like the breathing in and breathing out and the junction is where life is formed. So from that perspective, when Saturn and Jupiter are together, that is basically a new epoch for the world. So we make charts at those times and that will those charts will give you insight into the next 20 years. So let us make that chart at New Delhi and if you look at the Rashi chart, in the Rashi chart, let's make the Bhava chart. And we'll make, we have to make it again, click again. So in the Rashi chart, Sun is in Sagittarius but longitude wise he is in the 4th house. So Lagna Lord in the 4th house aspecting the 10th house and he is with a bunch of planets, nothing really interesting. And there is a yoga in the 5th house between 5th Lord Jupiter and 7th Lord Saturn. So that is a nice yoga and the Yogarka Mars, he is in Mulatrikona. So Mars is very strong. So there are some good indications in the chart. Let us look at how relations will be during this 20 year period for India. And if you look at the Navamsa chart, yeah, Lagna is close to 15 degrees, so Bhava Chakra is likely to be the same, so no need to change. So Lagna, okay, let us see. Yeah, so the seventh lot of relations with other countries, Mercury, is in the seventh house. So it shows strong relations with other nations. And Mercury is also a very beneficial planet for relations. He basically, Mercury is one planet who is friendly with everybody. So it shows good diplomacy and good relations with other countries. And Sun is the ninth lord. Ninth is the secondary house for diplomacy, apart from seventh. So seventh and ninth lords together in the seventh house is awesome for diplomacy. So this is a great period for Indian diplomacy. India will deal with other countries intelligently and strongly, assertively. And uh, Mars is the fifth lord, and actually he is close. It may be fourth house. Let us, we have to look at the Bhav Chakra and click this again. Okay, so Mars is in Mulatrikona, but longitude wise he is in the fourth house. So Lagna lord Jupiter and fifth lord Mars are together in the fourth house. So there is a Raj Yoga in the fourth house of direction. So Indian diplomacy gets a very wise and aggressive direction during this period. So this is a very good period for Indian diplomacy and India's foreign relations. And the sixth Lord Venus is in the twelfth house. So that's a Vipreet Raj Yoga. It may show some wars etc. but it will, in the end it is a it is a Vipreta Raj Yoga. And if you look at D24, let us just make the Bhava Chakra just to be on the safe side. Click the button again. Yeah, we got it. Okay. So if you look at India, Siddhamsa. Siddhamsa in the case of individuals shows knowledge. In the case of a country shows the knowledge within the country and technological and scientific achievements in the country, etc. So if you see the uh, ninth house, it can it is very strong. Ninth Lord Saturn is in, oh, actually longitude wise, they are all in the eighth house of research. So eighth house contains eighth Lord Saturn, third Lord of initiative Sun, and Jupiter, seventh Lord of partnership and relations. They are all in the eighth house of uh, research. So it is a very glorious period for Indian research. And the Lagna Lord is in the ninth house in a friendly sign, Mercury. So uh, basically that's, that's a blessing for the chart. So overall this is a very powerful chart. So Indian science and technology will make new leaps in this period. And if we see the uh, Hora chart, wealth in the country, the Bhav Chakra, If you see the Bhava Chakra, Lagna Lord Saturn is in 11th house of gains and aspecting Lagna, which is a blessing for Lagna. And you and the, and there is a Vipritra Yoga between the 6th Lord Mercury 
ಅಂಡ್ ಏಯ್ತ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಸನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಏಯ್ತ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಸೊ ಎಸ್ ಎ ವಿಪರೀತ ರಾಜಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಾಹು ಕೇತು ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಹೌಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಟೂ ಮೇಲ್ ಫಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಸೊ ಶೋಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಅಗ್ರೆಸಿವ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆಲ್ ಬಿ ದೆಲ್ ಬಿ ಸಮ್ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸಡನ್ ರೈಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಹೌಸ್ ದೆರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಚಂದ್ರಮಂಗಳ ಯೋಗ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಸೊ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟಿವ್ ಇನ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಓವರಾಲ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಡಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ಡಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ಶೋಸ್ ದ ಸಟಿಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಮಿಕ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷ ಯೋಗಾಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಲಗ್ನ ಲಾಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಗ್ನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಲಾಡ್ ವೀನಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೆಂತ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೂಲ ತ್ರಿಕೋಣ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಶೋಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಗವರ್ನೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಪೇಟ್ರಿಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಗವರ್ನೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪೇಟ್ರಿಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನ್ಕನ್ವೆನ್ಷನಲ್ ಗವರ್ನೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ವೆರಿ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವೆರಿ ವೈಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಕಾಂಬಿನೇಷನ್ ಅವ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷ ಯೋಗ ಮಾರ್ಸ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಲಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಮಾರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದ ಶೋಸ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಗ್ರೆಸಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಲೀಡರ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಗ್ರೆಸಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಲೀಡರ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಪೇಟ್ರಿಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನ್ಕನ್ವೆನ್ಷನಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ವೈಸ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇದರ್ ಮೂಲ ತ್ರಿಕೋಣ ಆರ್ ಓನ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಇನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಕ್ವಾಡ್ರಂಟ್ ಸೊ ತ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷ ಯೋಗ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾಸ್ ಡೆಸ್ಟಿ ಕಾರ್ಮಿಕಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷ ಯೋಗ ಸಶ್ಯಾಂಸ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಲ್ ರೀಚ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೆಟಿ ಗುಡ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ಛ ದಶ ಚತುರಾಸಿ ಇಸ್ ಮದಸ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಲಾಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ನ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಚತುರಾಸಿ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮದಸ ವಿಲ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಆಫ್ ಷಷ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಸ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ಜುಪಿಟರ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಜುಪಿಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಲಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಲಗ್ನ ಡೆಬ್ರಿಟೇಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಶೋ ಸಮ್ ಹಿಡನ್ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದ ಪ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ದ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯಾಂಡಮಿಕ್ ಸೊ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಡೀಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಮ್ ಹಿಡನ್ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೀನಸ್ ದಸ ಇಸ್ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ನೌ ಹೀಸ್ ದ ಟೆಂತ್ ಲಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಯೋಕಾರಕ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಲ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಮೇಕ್ ಲೀಪ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ and patriotism will increase in india and saturn lagna lord in lagna this is a time when india will assert and india will really rise so these two periods are very very important for india and sun he is the eighth lord eighth lord in the sixth house with the seventh lord so it is a seventh and eighth lord together in the sixth house shows some relationships going wrong and some wars etc so this is a period when india is likely to be involved in some wars and some destruction as a result of it and continuing into sun period because he is the seventh lord of relations in the sixth house of quarrels so these periods will she see some wars and mars fourth house is also house of construction of house building so this